Welcome to another episode of Capital City News, your connection to Salt Lake City government. I'm your host, Poonam Kumar, updating you from the historic Tower Theater, located in the 9th and 9th neighborhood. Known for screening independent films, the Tower Theater is also a venue for the upcoming Sundance Film Festival, which begins on January 19th. For this week's episode, we'll be learning more from Laura Fritz, the city's economic development director. And our History Minute is about this unique gem behind me. But first, let's start with our legislative update and look back. More than 150 people attended the city council meeting earlier this month, where dozens of individuals expressed concerns about the locations for four new homeless resource centers. Since then, the city has had a number of public feedback opportunities and community workshops. Another workshop will be held on Wednesday, January 18th at 7 p.m. at Nibley Park Elementary School, located at 2785 South, 800 East. The City Council elected new leadership. Stan Penfold will serve as Chair of the Council and Charlie Luke will serve as Vice Chair. Penfold represents District 3 and served as Vice Chair in 2016. Luke represents District 6. The Council also approved the appointment of Carl Lieb as the new Fire Chief of Salt Lake City and a budget amendment, which will include funding for the 2017 Twilight Concert Series. New this year, Mayor Jackie Biskupski announced Salt Lake City will now offer its full-time employees six weeks paid parental leave for mothers, fathers, adoptive, and foster parents. While the United States stands alone as the only industrialized nation to not offer paid parental leave, Salt Lake City now joins a handful of cities and counties to offer this unique benefit. Salt Lake City launched an innovative startup housing and business development project on 2.3 acres of city-owned property. The site of the old Barnes Bank building, next to the public safety building, will now be home to larger affordable housing units, including micro-unit apartments, business incubator space, and ground-level retail. With winter comes the height of the inversion season. Salt Lake City employees join Mayor Jackie Biskupski to take action in reducing emissions by committing to the Clear Air Challenge. Many employees will use public transit or carpool at minimum at least once a week. The public can do the same. To learn more on how you can help clear the air, visit slcgreen.com air. Forbes lists Utah as number one for best states for business, and Salt Lake City plays a major role in achieving that status. Laura Fritz, Salt Lake City's Director of Economic Development, is here to tell us more about what's on the horizon. I'm Laura Fritz. I'm the new Director of the Department of Economic Development for Salt Lake City Corporation. I've spent over 20 years in economic development. So economic development really is the lifeblood of any city. Um, we are the opportunity for revenue for the city, which allows us to have great amenities. Um, but it's also the opportunity for job creation and economic investment and bringing back vitality to communities. I often say that people want to live in really cool places. And so how do we make Salt Lake City a really cool and vibrant and special place? I think the most exciting thing about this new department is that um, there has been great political support for economic development in the city. The mayor's vision has been to create a vibrant economic development department. Um, and within that department, we have three divisions. We have the business development division, which again does our recruit, retain, expand, help businesses get started, the arts council, and then the redevelopment agency. And so combining those resources, combining that talent, um, and making sure that we're sharing information and overlapping those resources, uh, we believe will make for a very powerful economic development program. Um, the largest win that we've had this year has been UPS, um, with over a million square feet of new development that will be occurring. We also have been fortunate to have post serials, which has been a recent win. Um, again, that's over 900,000 square feet of new uh, space that will be built. It's actually the largest build to suit project in Utah, so that's pretty exciting. Um, we've also had some smaller wins. We've had a bike component company. Um, we've had Stryker Medical locate here. Um, so, you know, we're really excited about the uh, companies that are choosing Salt Lake City, and there's more to come. So in the first six months of this department, I am so proud of our team and the work that we've been able to accomplish. We've had several big wins. We've had a number of small wins too. What we're really excited about is the over $300 million that 
companies have, are planning to invest in our city. I truly believe that companies vote with their dollars. And the fact that companies are voting on Salt Lake City and are making that investment here, I think is amazing and we want that momentum to continue. Economic development cannot be done in a vacuum. Everything we do has to be done in partnership. And if we share those resources and we share our collective experiences, we can only be successful. And next up is our History Minute. The Tower Theatre has been a fixture in the 9th and 9th neighborhood since its opening on January 8, 1928. It began as a silent film palace complete with a Kilgen wonder organ. It gets its name from its original design, crafted to resemble the Tower of London. By 1930, the tower became Tower Talkies when they installed state-of-the-art projectors, and it became a mainstay in Salt Lake City. It also had the distinction of becoming the first air-conditioned theater in the city. By 1950, new owners took over and changed the facade to something more modern and added the Tower House Coffee and Ice Cream Shop. Over the years, the tower began to crumble, and it looked like it might not be saved. But the Salt Lake Film Society was formed in 2001 to preserve its legacy. They refurbished the theater, put in the best art film rental library in the state, and have remained an important fixture in the Salt Lake City art scene. Each year, it serves as a venue for the Sundance Film Festival, and has seen more than its fair share of Hollywood glamour. And today, it remains the oldest operating movie house in the state. That's it for this episode of Capital City News. Thanks for watching. For SLC TV, I'm Poonam Kumar, signing off from inside the Tower Theater.